Greetings, I'm Squared here. Today I'm just going to go through some examples that you're going to have in your homework. You'll have three sections on Delta Math in your homework and I'm just going to do some examples from each of those sections. So if this isn't the section that you need help on, just fast forward a little bit and you can get to the next section. So the first thing we're going to do is just remember, we reviewed this in class last time, how to change from radical form to exponential form. So what we need to do to remember that is that the top number is always our power and the bottom number is always our index. So if I'm going to rewrite that, my index goes here and my power goes there. And that's all I have to do, just rewrite it. Okay, so remember this is going to be my numerator and this is going to be my denominator when I switch it. So it's going to be x to the 4 fifths. So if you remember those, then it's pretty easy. If you don't, <laughs> Then it's pretty difficult. You're not sure what's happening. So we're going to go to this one. Remember, if there isn't a power, it's always a 1. So x to the 1 fourth would be that one. And the index would be the denominator. And I don't have to write a 1 on the x for the power. And then this would be the square root. That would be a 2 of x cubed. So I don't need to write it when it's a square root. Remember, you could write a 2 there, but it's just not done when we have a square root. It's this extra step you don't need. It's not wrong, just that you don't need it. So I'm going to leave it off. And then this one over here, I'm going to get it into rational. So the 2 is my power, and the index is my denominator. Or I should say my numerator and denominator. Okay, so that's section 1. So the next section, we're going to deal with fraction exponents and our rules. So the thing that you want to make sure you understand on this one is they're asking you what the value of a is, so you don't have to put that base. You don't have to say x to the a when we get our a. We just have to say what a is. So basically, I'm just using this my exponent rules to simplify. So I want to always know that I'm dividing. And when I'm dividing, I subtract exponents. So you want to make sure you remember that. Excuse my writing. So I know that it's going to be x to the 3 minus 1 sixth. Well, what is 3 minus 1 sixth? Well, we need to get a common denominator. So 3, and three in the terms of 6 would be 18 sixths, because 18 divided by 6 is 3. So now I have 18 sixths minus 1 sixth, which gets me 17 sixths. So that is a. Okay. Now, if we were rewriting it, we would have said x to the 17 6, but since they're only asking you for a, you don't need to write that. Just keep that in mind, though. Okay, here again. So I'm going to recognize that there's multiplication going on, and multiplication means to add exponents. So I'm going to add 1 fifth plus 4. Again, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to change 4. I'm going to, it's kind of like multiplying it by 5 over 5. I'm going to change that to 20 fifths. And then I'm going to add. So I'm going to get x to the 21 fifths. So a equals 21 fifths. And that's the, what they'll be looking for on Delta Math. All right. Now this one's kind of can seem a little tricky because you don't see an exponent. But remember, there's always a 1 if there's no exponent. Because we're multiplying x's. We're going to add exponents. So always remember, check what's going on and then figure out, do you add, subtract, or multiply? Because those are your options. So I have x to the 1 plus 4 fifths, but I'm going to change my 1 to 5 fifths. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And so if I add those, I get x to the 9 fifths. So a is 9 fifths. All right, this is a power raised to a power. So when we have a power raised to a power, remember we're going to multiply exponents. When we multiply, it's top times top, bottom times bottom. So I'm going to get x to the 4 thirds. So a is 4 thirds. All right, two more, and then we'll go to the next section. Division is happening. When I'm dividing x's, I'm going to subtract exponents. What's nice about these is I get a nice common denominator. I don't even have to change my denominators. 4 thirds minus 2 thirds. 4 of something minus 2 of something is 2 of something. So that's just going to be x to the 2 thirds. So a is 2 thirds. And finally, I'm dividing. So I'm going to be subtracting. So it's going to be x to the 1 half minus 1 sixth. Common denominator would be 6. So if I multiply that by 3 over 3, I get x to the 3 sixths minus 1 sixth, which gets me 2 sixths. 
but you probably want to reduce that. So A is going to equal one third. Because two sixths reduces to one third. All right, and then your last section is going to be kind of a combination of those two sections. So sometimes you're going to have radicals, sometimes you're going to have rational exponents. Regardless, it's nice because there's a multiple choice. So we're going to pick a multiple choice. So what I like to do, notice what's happening again. It's dividing. That means I'm going to subtract. So I have negative 8, right? I'm going to ignore that 5 twelfths for a second. I have negative 8 minus a negative 4. Well, a minus a negative changes to a positive. So I end up with w to the negative 4 to the 5 twelfths. So I just used my division rule, which says to subtract exponents, but now I have a power rule, which says to multiply exponents. So I'm actually going to take negative 4 times 5 twelfths. Well, 4, this is going to reduce. Always reduce first if you can. 20 twelfths is not as easy to reduce as 4 twelfths. So we're going to say 4 goes into there once, 4 goes into there three times, so I actually end up with negative 5 thirds as my exponent. So I'm looking for an index of 3. That means this one's out and this one's out, because those had indexes of 5. And I need a power. It's negative, so that means it's going to be in the denominator. These two, they both have an index of 3 and a power of 5, but that was negative, and negative tells me it's in the denominator. So that is going to be the answer. Right, let's try another one. So first again, I'm going to combine all of this. Well, this is multiplication. And multiplication says I add the exponent. So that's going to be a 1 over u to the negative 11. But a negative 11 in the denominator tells me to move it. So I'm going to move it up. And that is going to be u to the 11th. Now, I haven't taken care of my little radical yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to u. That's my power. This is my index. Remember, index is always denominator. Power is always numerator. Well, 11 and 33 reduce. 11 goes into there three times. So that's the same as u to the one-third. So which one says u to the one-third? That one. All right, let's try another one. These have a lot going on, so you've got to kind of go slow with it. So remember, there's no index. So I'm going to put it there just so you remember that when there's no index, it's a 2. It's a square root. That's important. So let's simplify this first. Um, we can use our quotient rule. So that would be n to the negative 4 minus a negative 5. I'm just going to subtract negative 4 minus a negative 5 because when I'm dividing n's, I'm going to subtract exponents. Well, that becomes positive because it's subtracting a negative, which gives me just n. So underneath there is just n. So the square root of n is the same as n to the 1 half. Remember my power? There wasn't one, so it's 1. There wasn't one of these guys, so it's 2. So n to the 1 half is the option to choose. All right, so look at that one. What? You always want to ask yourself, what is happening in the parentheses? I'm multiplying. That means I'm going to add exponents. Okay, so I'm kind of ignoring this at first because I'm just taking care of what's in the middle. So I get a negative 11. So u to the negative 11, and then the power here is 44. So I could change that to a fraction, but I don't like to until I take care of the power rule. The power rule says to multiply. So I'm going to say u to the negative 11 times 3 over 44. And then I'm going to reduce. So remember, if there isn't a number underneath, it's a 1. So 11 goes into 11 once, and it goes into 44 four times. So I'm ending up with a negative 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 4 is 4, a negative 3 fourths. So that means my index is 4, my power is 3, but if I want to get rid of the negative, I have to put it in the denominator. So I had to remember the negative meant it was a denominator, so those were gone. And then I had to remember that the index was 4, so it's that one's gone, and it's just this one. Okay, I think we got a couple more of those, and then we'll 
call it quits for today. <laughs> so here we go. There's a 1 there if you don't see it, and it's multiplication. Multiplication says to add, so 1 plus 8 is 9. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step is just to change it. 9 over 24, because that's my numerator, that's my denominator. But that reduces. 3 goes into both of those. 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 3 goes into 24 8 times, so I end up with s to the 3 eighths. So that would be this one. Whoops, you couldn't see it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yep. All right, so this one here, I'm going to simplify this first. So that's multiplication, so I'm going to add. So that's a to the 13. But since it's in the denominator, I'm going to move it up. I don't have to, but I, I like to do the power rule while I'm doing that. You could do the power rule down here if you want. Well, we can try it that way. Let's go for it. 1 to any power is just going to be 1. So it's basically down here, it's going to be 13 times, because it's a power raised to a power, 3 over 52. Well, 13 goes into 52 four times. So now I have 3 fourths. So I have a to the 3 fourths, but I'm in the denominator. So I'm going to change that to my index of 4, power of 3. But again, I'm in my denominator, so I'm looking for a denominator, those guys are gone, and I'm looking for an index of 4, so it has to be that one. All right, good luck with that. M squared, signing out.